Hey, it's Justin. I just wanted to show a quick video of how we use Airtable. I just made this quick automation that allows anybody on our team to send the pickup email for projects. Uh, when a project's done, we obviously need to tell clients that the project's ready. So previously, this was kind of siloed through Pipedrive. Now anybody can do this that's in our Airtable. Like normal, any view, you can change the project status into client ready. And we've all seen what happens here. This nice little automation that we had previously sends this little project ready in the production uh, channel on Slack. So if you happen to be in Slack, you can click this link. It's going to take you to the project view. All the way at the bottom of that, now you can say send pickup email. And this is actually going to send an email to the customer with all the details that are in Airtable. So when I click this, you're going to see a bunch of stuff happen. Over here is the project view, project view. So it noted in the notes that pickup email automation was sent and the deadline for the project was 827 and we had one day left, which is kind of cool. But it just moves all the notes for the project down a little bit. And then if I go to my email, I, I sent it to myself, but this is what that looks like. Hi Bodhi, your part's ready for pickup. You know, they can schedule their pickup with this link like normal. It's got their payment information, all of our current RS policies, the pickup details. So I thought that was pretty cool. The summation is if you want to send the pickup email, and you can totally do this if it makes sense, I, all you have to do is move the project to client ready and then check the box that says send pickup email. And that should happen. So you're probably asking, how did you actually do this? Because it looks cool. I don't know how to do that, though. I'll show you right now, it's pretty easy. You gotta have something set up in an air table. So this is a base and then these are tables. And I'm gonna go through that in another video of how to set up something useful like a project management system like we have. It's quite a bit more than can be covered in just this video. But let's say you have something like this. This is a Kanban view of our projects. So each one of these is a project. You need to be a paying subscriber to use automations in apps actually pretty affordable. It's a great system. I'll pause here and say that we used Airtable for free for multiple years and it was great, but I think it was completely different once they introduced automations and we started paying for that. I highly recommend it. Try it for free. Uh, we've got a link below so you can sign up to do any of this kind of automation stuff where you really start to pick up some time and save yourself some effort. I think it's totally worth the subscription cost. So automations are right up here. And you can see we have quite a few. Uh, I think you can only do 20 per base right now. And some of these are probably needing to be archived or combined. But down here, I've got our send pickup email, so a recent edition. And I made a copy here so we can go through it. Your Airtable editing view is, I'll call this. You have a trigger, which is if you're familiar with like if this, then that, or if then statements in general. Basically, we're looking for what are we causing uh, the automation to trigger by. So I often use when record matches conditions, but there's all these other options and they keep adding to this. I've been really impressed by how often Airtable keeps making changes and improvements. The more savvy you are with coding, you could make your own completely custom scripted automations built into this too. So you can use an event from Google Calendar. For this one, we're gonna do uh, when record matches conditions and I'm looking at the projects table. Basically, you just make a condition by clicking add condition, and then you can choose any of the fields of data that you have in there. So you could do if it was, uh, you know, a job total was greater than 200 or $200. It could be one of the fields there. I don't want that one though. And then you can also do stuff like when status is client ready or the pickup email is checked, but I need these all to be true for this to work out. And it's kind of a, a double fault or a triple fault check here so that we don't actually send emails until it's in the client ready status. We have all these statuses in our Kanban or just the project statuses. So somebody's moved it to client ready. And then we check send pickup email as a field that's a checkbox. And notes don't already contain pickup email automation sent. So if this email automation has already happened, 
and for some reason this all gets removed and checked again, it won't send because we've had two double checks here. So I can keep adding more conditions as needed, but this is the, the setup that I've made for these. There's just tons of options. You could have, you know, we have some that are built so that we send an automated receipt email when somebody sends us an inquiry. So if the email is empty, then obviously we can't send the, the email to them. Or, you know, if they said they've sent us files and there's no files attached, it won't send a certain type of email. You can do a lot of stuff with this. So anyway, this is the trigger. We'll run a test. I should have made an, oh, my test failed, which makes sense. So if we go back out of here, I've made a test project called 999 Big Spheres. It's currently in process, but I need it to be in client ready. So this changes that status. And I just got a Slack notification, which is funny. So I put it in client ready and I've scrolled all the way to the bottom and I click send pickup email. You can see I've written a little note here to whoever sends this or wants to send it, what you need to do for that automation to work in the description field, which is under field description. Check that box. Now let's go back to our automation. It's up here, it's already open. So I'm gonna click this test one that I've been working on. Go back to the trigger. Last time it failed, so I'll test again. And we got a test ran successfully. You can do a little drop downs here and see which one did it pick. It found the one that I wanted, which is our big spheres. So I want to now go to actions. So you have a trigger and you have actions. So we found a project or a record we want to do something with. Then I want to go to Gmail send. So you can add any type of action here. I already have these because I duplicated this project, this automation. But you can have it send a normal email. You could have it create another record. Uh, obviously, any of these options down here, they keep adding integrations, which are really great. I don't actually use them, but could uh, you know integrate your Salesforce if that's something you use. We do use the Slack one to send a message to our team, which is really useful. Let's go edit the Gmail send. So if I click on that one, it pops up on the right as it has here. And I like the Gmail one because we do use Gmail for work stuff and it gives you a little more option to change kind of the from and some of these more details than the other one, the send email one does. In the to field, you can use the little, or any of these fields here of the email, you can use the plus or use the left bracket on your keyboard and then you can see any of the steps previously to input into this field. So it's kind of like a Mad Lib, if you will. Um, so if I click continue, I can then search for like attachments or in this case, I want the email of the person. So that's already inserted. That's how you would do that. Below here is a subject of the email. This is what we like to have in the subject. And then I put the project number by adding the project number here. So I inserted that. And that's what this is. So it's like a placeholder for when it gets sent. That's what these little things are. In the message, uses Markdown and HTML. So if you know some of that, otherwise you can keep it pretty simple, but that's how I made it look nice and pretty. And this up here is our logo being dropped in. And then I said, hi, and I put in the contact's first name with the plus again. So same thing, insert, comma. Your parts are ready for pickup and then you can make links. So if you don't know Markdown, check out this little link here. You should definitely learn Markdown. It's very useful. Here's our pickup link and I added more details. So obviously whatever you want this to say, I have it linked to the invoice from the record so that they can pay that. I've got, you know, payment information, all our coronavirus info, our shop address, everything they need to come pick up the project. Very obvious. You can add attachments to this then. Um, from previously uploaded things. So you could send them completed photos of the project if you'd like that are uploaded to your record that has been found previously and those could be attached. If this isn't available, you click show more options. You can have a CC, a BCC. We use these things for kind of how we use Freshdesk for our CRM. You can send the, obviously the from name, email address that it's actually sent from and then who they want to reply to. 
we can then preview it, which is pretty cool, and see exactly what that might look like. You get all of the detail there and what, it's, what that markdown converts into. You can also run a test. It, I think it's going to fail right now because I've used some fake emails, but that that's the first step of the automation. I think you can do something like 25 actions for each uh, automation. So I am only using two here, but my next one is to update the record, which is add an action, update record. And you can change that up here too. Basically, I'm looking for it to update that record, but you could have it update another record if you wanted to. So I'm having it look in the projects and then I have it look up the record, which I just go to the first step and I insert the record ID because that's the one we already had selected. And then you can choose fields to update. And I chose the field of notes. So I typed in notes, which is already selected. You could update the name if you wanted to. You can just type things in like, hello, I'm a name. That will actually update. It's not smart text like any of these dumped in fields, but totally an option and something we obviously do here. So I have um, an emoji with this little detail here that allows it to uh, update the notes field for when this sends. And this is a quote. And then uh, something I learned, which is pretty cool, if you already have something in a field of notes, you can put all your new stuff. We like to put the new stuff at the top of the field. I put a little break here with three dashes. And then you just put in the notes again. So like put in the field notes. So it takes the previous information that was there and doesn't lose it because an automation will just update the field completely. So this is like adding the new stuff and then copying and pasting in what was already there. So you don't lose it. Pretty nifty. I can continue to add more fields if you had some other, if I wanted to update the status, if I had a status for like pick up email sent, then that would automatically update the status so that everybody knew that was sent. We don't actually do that. So I can run a test on that too. And again, I think it might fail. Let's try it. I'll run this test up above for this, this option. Oh, it did send. So we just sent an email to some um, random email, unfortunately, but sorry guys. And then I'll go down to the update record uh, step and run that test too. It should give me an error. Not too surprised about that. I don't see, oh, fields cannot be converted to a string. I think we're probably missing something here, but this normally works flawlessly if you've got your automation set up just right. Um, but we can continue to add more options. Like I said, if you know how to script, there's a lot of power here. And the community is actually really good, the forum of helping you kind of create something custom for your uses. So you can learn how to do this or just ask for help or hire somebody on Upwork if you have something custom like updating a Shopify status or something like that. So I don't want that. You know, I could go through and I could uh, do a lot of things with this. You could update or add a sheet, Google Sheet Row. It's, it's really kind of how creative you are. I, I, tell people that often with Airtable, it's it's basically a glorified spreadsheet, but then you've got all this power built on top of it, like a, a Zapier or an if this, then that with the built-in automations and apps, but there's also then the connection with Zapier, which we use as well. That's kind of a simple automation setup. And I think you can totally do this yourself. Try out, create a base, and then just start playing around. That's how I usually get going. And then I'll put it into my production or my actual Airtable bases to make sure that it's not sending errant emails to customers, which I've done before on accident. It happens. We use Airtable for a lot of things. We track all of our inventory for the shop in here. There's also apps, which I didn't even get into, but you can create labels. You can track what's on order, what needs to be ordered. We use QR codes for all this stuff. Um, I'd like to go through more of this. I'm curious what you all might find interesting here. Little tip here, if you push Command or Control K, depending on your system, you can then switch to another base real quickly. So one of the things we're working on right now is creating a maintenance automated system. So it has all of our assets pulled in or our equipment, and then we have different items and what we need to do with them. And we're cu currently building that out. It's taking some time, but 
I'd love to share some of this. I'm curious what you all might be interested in seeing. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's something and definitely subscribe because I'll be sharing more of our Airtable. If you want to support the channel but don't want a Patreon-like subscription, Buy Me A Coffee is the perfect option. The idea of Buy Me A Coffee is to offer someone a cash equivalent of buying them a drink as a thank you. It's a one-time thing to show your support for the channel and keeps the content and coffee flowing. Look for the link below for Buy Me A Coffee. If you want to get our cat and cam models that we show in the videos, subscribe to our Patreon at cnc.money. Thanks. If you haven't subscribed, it's imperative you do. I know if you watched this far, you obviously enjoyed it a little.